The Legend of Jimmy Spoon by Christiana Gregory, Chapter 34, Wounded. One frosty morning while Washaki was away, Jimmy heard a growl as he carried Old Mother's brass bucket up from the stream. Dust flew from behind a teepee, and before he knew it, he felt teeth bite into his leg. It was Poog's dog. Blasted animal! Jimmy kicked the dog, spilling water into the sand. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Poog's mother lumbering toward him, lasso in hand. Suddenly, her rope landed around Jimmy's neck. She jerked him off his feet and dragged him back to her teepee. The bucket rattled down the hill. Her daughter was waiting with more rope. She tied Jimmy's hands and feet behind him while the woman held, while the woman held her knife to over his eyes. Tonight, I serve Tybo stew. When I had been resting nearby, with amazing strength, he leaped into the teepee and twisted the woman's arm behind her. The knife fell into the fire ring. Jimmy could hear the cry of a child running for help. In a wink, old mother was there. She slashed Jimmy's bindings, then held her own knife up to the woman, a hiss on her breath. Outside, old mother ordered. A crowd gathered. Poog watched from a safe distance. The women eyed each other with a ferocity Jimmy had never seen. Stop, Poog pleaded. Three elders stepped in and forced the mothers away from one another. My little son's leg was nearly bit off. Look! In the scuffle, everyone had forgotten Jimmy. He lay in the sand, blood pooling under him. The last thing he remembered was seeing the white of his thigh bone. When Jimmy woke, the medicine man was standing over him. He passed a large fan made of eagle feathers over the leg. A poultice was tied to the wound. By nightfall, Jimmy was shivering with fever. His leg was swollen pink. The medicine man told old mother to give Jimmy sips of water as often as possible. He came every few hours to change the poultice. You will be walking soon, old mother told him. Jimmy didn't tell her his leg felt worse by the minute. He pretended to sleep. The next morning, Poog's teepee had been moved across the river. Nearby lay One Eye, alone with a muddy robe. His family was traveling with Washaki. He had no strength to erect his own lodge. Jimmy asked Old Mother to bring the man their tent, to their tent. He smells bad. He saved my life, Old Mother. One Eye was too weak to walk. Soon, Old Mother helped him into a clean hide and dragged him into their tent. Jimmy's stomach rose in his throat while he looked closely at his rescuer. A scabby hole was where his nose should have been. But worse was the hole in his side. The crow arrow had narrowly missed One Eye's heart. Old Mother went to work immediately, cleaning the wound in her, with her sage tea. Her fist could almost fit inside the hole. The medicine man didn't help because he was busy tending the other injured. As buffalo chips and firewood became scarce around the camp, they moved south through the sand hills to a large stream they called Tonobiba, or Tonobipa, near piles of lava rocks. Traveling was agony for the wounded. It had taken all day for them to reach Tonobipa, just five miles away. One eye lay on a stretcher behind Old Mother's horse. Jimmy rode Pinto Bean with great difficulty. Sometimes it was less painful for him to hobble along on crutches he made from oak branches. By sundown, Jimmy's leg hurt so much he couldn't stand. He lay on the riverbank to drink while Old Mother hoisted the teepee herself and unpacked 16 horses. He was afraid to tell her he felt worse. When she saw his face, she yelled for the medicine man. He unwrapped Jimmy's poultice. The wound was full of dark green pus. We must cut the leg off, the medicine man said. And that is the end of chapter 34.